high voltages are coming. The high voltages are coming. No, really, it's true. Trends in industrial automation, smart energy, and electric vehicles are bringing higher than ever before voltages to your door or maybe your nearby factory or EV charging station. I don't really know how exactly close they are to your house. But with all those higher voltages comes the need for isolation, either to protect ourselves or to protect the design itself. And if we're talking about isolation for these kind of high voltages, it needs to be robust and reliable. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Luke Trowbridge from Texas Instruments and I examine the benefits of isolation in high voltage systems. We also explore the benefits of TI's integrated transformer technology and how TI's high voltage isolation can help you streamline your design process, reduce your bill of materials, and ensure reliable and robust system operation. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Texas Instruments. Hi, Luke. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Amelia. Glad to be here. So, Luke, we're talking about high voltage isolation for reliable and robust system operation today. But before we dig into the details, where are you seeing isolation playing a big role in these days? Oh, man, we're seeing a need for isolation in so many different applications. Somewhere isolation has been a requirement for many, many years, and somewhere the requirement is new and going through constant changes. I'm showing here just six of the key sectors where we see isolation as a key design consideration for our customers. But the list continues to motor drives, power delivery, tests and measurement, and so on. Factory automation, building automation, and smart grid contain end equipment with long history of needing and designing with isolation products. The requirements are changing and certainly growing, but the demand for useful isolation products has been around for some time. Applications such as automotive and medical equipment have recently shown a big spike in the demand for isolation products due to changes in voltages and or how the equipment interacts with humans. For personal electronics, the first thought is not always about high voltages, but we cannot forget about products like all the chargers and power adapters that go along with our gadgets. These do have demand for high voltage isolation. Absolutely. Now, we've talked about isolation in terms of automotive designs here on Chalk Talk before, but the next generation of automotive designs, especially EVs, present us with a whole new set of challenges in terms of isolation, right? Absolutely. I briefly alluded to this just before. Hybrid electric and fully electric vehicles bring to life a completely new set of design challenges for automakers these days. We have seen a long evolution from just hybrid cars, batteries, to the first fully electric vehicles, to the future demands for next generation electric vehicles. The biggest challenge that we're seeing that affects isolation requirements in automotive is the move from 400 volt to 800 volt battery systems. Why the move to 800 volts? Well, even though this brings a new set of design challenges, it helps automotive companies achieve three pretty critical goals. One, it approves charging time, which we all know is critical. Everyone is in a hurry and faster charging is a huge selling point for EV cars. Two, the size and weight of batteries. So 800 volt architecture leads to smaller batteries, which means lower car weight. And three, less precious metals. 800 volt means thinner copper wires, which reduces cost waste, and weight once again. Isolation is still a key requirement in 400 volt systems, but doubling that voltage to 800 volts means more pressure on the power and signal isolation barriers. So designers need to give extra consideration to products ability to communicate safely and reliably, as well as the isolator's ability to withstand these harsh voltage levels for the lifetime of a vehicle. We can all see that our cars are getting smarter and smarter. This is coming from smart sensors, more communication from pretty much every inch of the car and smarter decision making. This all leads to more isolated communication throughout basically the whole vehicle. 
That makes sense. Now, like you said before, isolation can be very valuable in industrial applications as well. And here again, we're looking at new challenges in terms of isolation, right? Yep, you got it. Industrial applications have their own challenges compared to automotive, but the overarching theme is consistent. Smarter systems with more communication and increasing voltage levels means more isolation and strict requirements for those isolators. In a smart grid application, industrial power supplies, all the motors in a factory, they all have a high bar for the isolation products used in their design. And I'll talk through a few of the obvious ones. Protect human safety. This is number one. These systems see and create some extreme voltages that are life-threatening to humans near the equipment. It's imperative that humans are isolated from this danger and that the isolation barrier remains strong for the life of that end product. Next is ground loops or ground potential differences. These end equipments are operating in extremely noisy environments, and it's critical that the data they're communicating with themselves is accurate and dependable. Eliminating ground potential differences in these communication paths increases the reliability of the communication, and isolation achieves this. Next, high side components are critical to the effectiveness and efficiency of a motor drive system, and the communication between the low side and high side must be isolated. We want to make sure the isolation is doing its job protecting the low side from high side voltage spikes, but essentially staying out of the way when it comes to the communication. We don't want the isolation to slow down the communication, interfere with the signals, or take up our whole board space or cost budget. And lastly, I'll mention CMTI or common mode transient immunity. Similar to my point on ground potential differences, these environments are noisy. Common mode transient immunity is defined as the maximum tolerable rate of rise or fall of the common mode voltage applied between the two isolated circuits. The unit is normally in kilovolts per microsecond or volts per nanosecond. And high CMTI means that the two isolated circuits, both the transmitter side and the receiver side, function well within the different data sheet specifications without error when striking the insulation barrier with very high rise positive slew rate or high fall negative slew rates. As switching frequencies continue to increase in FET driving applications, so do the requirements we're seeing for CMTI of an isolator. You can think of it as another metric for how robust the isolator is to noisy environments. Okay, so Luke, isolation is a hot issue now, but TI has been working on isolation technologies for a lot of years, right? You bet. I'm showing here a timeline of some of our prouder moments in the history of our isolation technology and the product offerings at TI. Almost two decades ago, TI made the commitment to grow its manufacturing processes in analog, especially developing isolation manufacturing technologies and integrated circuits for high-voltage systems. That kicked us off with the introduction of the industry's first SiO2, or silicon dioxide capacitive isolator, to then our release and qualification of multi-kilovolt products, to millions of hours of reliability testing, and to investments developing isolation technologies in 300 millimeter manufacturing, giving us flexibility to expand our isolation portfolio and deliver products to customers like never before. Our investment in isolation for high voltage systems has resulted in our ability to ship innovative, differentiated, industry-first products to customers around the world, from the fastest isolated gate driver to heavily integrated multi-channel digital isolators, Our engineers continue to accelerate innovation and expand our portfolio to offer new products in isolation that deliver the industry's highest levels of reliability while reducing system costs and board space and then meet those strict, complex design challenges of our customers. And all of this is under the umbrella of the TI company level advantage. Our own manufacturing and technology provides us tangible benefits of lower costs and greater control of our supply chain. We invest in internal manufacturing because we believe these benefits will be of growing strategic importance to us, and we can already see that. We'll talk about a few of these really special part releases today, but I'm also very excited for the future of isolation and isolation products that TI is going to offer. It's a core focus for our teams, and we're pushing hard every day to not just grow our portfolio, 
but grow with differentiated products that our customers want and they're asking us for. Fantastic. So to tackle those challenges you mentioned, Luke, how can TI help? If a customer has a need for an isolator, chances are we can help. I'm showing eight different categories of isolated products here on the screen, but these each have subcategories with many more product offerings. For example, the power for signal isolators is a really broad category or topic. How our customers achieve isolated power varies dramatically from system to system, and our approach is to have all the options available. It can be a high power, discrete flyback topology, a simple yet discrete transformer driver, or one of many integration paths like an isolated bias supply module, or even three-in-one products that combine isolated power, isolated data, and a communication transceiver like RS-45 or CAN. The goal is to give customers the option to find the best fit for their design. Ten years ago, this offering would not have been this broad, but now it is and it continues to grow, which I feel speaks to the investment TI is making in isolation as a whole. So yes, we want to create all these different product offerings, but we still want to stay true to our key isolation values. That's very high and reliable working voltages, long product lifetimes, and increased integration to help simplify the design process, reduce board space, and help customers reduce cost. Okay, so I think it's best if we actually jump into a few of these new products and really show you what we mean. I've selected three of our new product families to highlight today focused on both power and signal isolation. So I will spend some time introducing TI's new family of solid state relays, the TPSI 3050 and the TPSI 2140. Then we will look at the ISOW products, ISOW 7741, ISOW 1412, and ISOW 1044, where integration is the play. These are the products I mentioned before, integrating power isolation, data isolation, and a transceiver. And lastly, I'll talk through our UCC 12050 and UCC 14240 isolated power modules or isolated bias supplies, which are a great way to plug and play isolated power. Okay, so Luke, can you talk a bit about those first two solid state relays you mentioned? Yeah, let's jump into it. So the new TPSI 3050 and TPSI 2140 devices represent our isolated switch and isolated switch driver families. And maybe let's start with the question, what is a solid state relay? These devices are meant to turn on or off high voltage power systems and are an alternative to mechanical relays or photo relays. As the different system and end equipments we have been discussing adopt higher voltages, they need higher reliability. And one way to achieve this is to move from a mechanical relay to something that is solid state with no moving parts. And in general, we see the market moving towards solid state relays on a pretty significant scale. Our solutions offer an isolated switches family with integrated FETs, as well as family for drivers to control external silicon carbide or IGBTs. They integrate both power and signal transfer and offer the lifetime smaller solution size and overall isolation reliability that the market is demanding. The two devices that I'm highlighting today are both Q100 qualified for automotive applications, where we are seeing a need in end equipments like battery management systems, BMS systems, and traction inverter. But there is also significant use in the industrial markets we've been discussing, like factory and building automation and energy storage systems and solar inverters. So we do have a catalog version available in this product family. So Luke, what kind of benefits are we really looking at here? Let's talk about those benefits and why it really matters. So firstly, these devices combine power and signal into one chip. This helps with lowering system cost and certainly solution size. Discreetly implementing a SSR requires both a power supply and gate driver, but these are a great way to simplify when switching on and off high voltage systems. What else can we integrate or eliminate? Discrete solutions could require power resistors, isolated bias supplies, a mechanical read relay, etc. These products simplify those requirements, allowing for really significant space savings, up to a 90% reduction in some of the legacy designs we are seeing. Next is the lifetime of these products. 
Most electromechanical relays are rated for a number of switching cycles, which is usually in the 200,000 cycle range, while our devices can switch millions of times over their lifetime. The mechanical relay solutions are generally limited in temp range, as well as begin to degrade at those higher temperatures. The TPSI devices can operate at high temperatures, and they're specced at 125 degrees C ambient. The last benefit that I'll mention here, but this certainly is not a conclusive list, is the TPSI 2140 was designed for measurements in high voltage battery management systems. And its features such as avalanche current capability allows designers to optimize their system to quickly detect faults. Whereas photo relays are limited in their avalanche capability, so larger resistor values must be used, resulting in slower measurements. Overall, these devices really offer a strong reliability benefit over existing mechanical or photo relay solutions, then smaller solution size and lower cost. Okay, so Luke, if my audience wants to get started using these new solid state relays, where should they start? Good news is we have lots of resources readily available on our website. First, I will mention that these devices, the TPSI 3050-Q1 and TPSI 2140-Q1, are available for sampling on TI.com. And reiterate that we have more products coming out, expanding the portfolio in both automotive and catalog industrial grades. We also have evaluation modules available for both products, so engineers can quickly test out the performance and features of the device. Then I just recommend checking out everything we have to offer at ti.com slash SSR. We have developed a lot of reference designs that are a great jumping off point. We have several calculator tools and P-SPICE models available as well. Fantastic. Now, Luke, you also mentioned new digital isolators with integrated power. So can you give me some more details about those as well? I sure can. So let's talk about these ISO W parts. I will start by mentioning that the internal architecture of a digital isolator consists of two separate digital integrated circuits on a split lead frame with a high voltage isolation dielectric barrier between them. So each IC requires a separate power supply and ground for both the primary and secondary side of the device with no physical connection between them. This requirement is independent of whether a device supports basic or reinforced isolation and applies to digital isolators as well as isolated devices with integrated interfaces. This is one of the reasons a designer may need to add an isolated power supply if power is not readily available on both sides of the isolation barrier. And there are a lot of ways to achieve an isolated power supply, but an all-in-one integration solution is what we have to offer with these ISOW parts shown here today they feature an integrated DC-DC converter. I'll start by reading the italicized bullet at the top right of the screen. To be truly useful, an integrated power and signal isolation solution must offer high efficiency, high power delivery, and low emissions while offering high isolation performance. That's a big ask for one heavily integrated device. But this new family delivers, particularly in the low emissions. So the family offers a standard digital isolator with integrated power, with either two or four channel options. The ISO W7741 represents a four channel version from this catalog of devices. Then two more devices further integrating transceivers. The ISO W1044 integrates an additional controller area network or CAN transceiver. And the ISO W1412 integrates an RS45 transceiver. These devices are designed to meet CISPR 32 Class B limits with a significantly smaller solution size than discreetly designed alternatives. The benefit of eliminating the need for a transformer on the board, the reduction in board size, and improved ease of certifications are often considered worthwhile trade-offs to achieve a high-performance design in the smallest footprint possible. So while discrete solutions may provide higher efficiency and lower radiate emissions in some cases, the space savings and certification simplifying benefits ultimately enable a faster time to market. Cool. So let's get into more of the benefits here. What specific benefits are we looking at for these new digital isolators? The first I already mentioned, compact design and lower cost. Transformers or modules used for isolated power typically occupy a large space on the board, not only in the X and Y dimension, but also in height. 
For applications where the boards are stacked next to each other, this transformer height often dictates the spacing between boards. By using planar transformers within the standard SOIC package, the ISOW products reduce board space by almost 48% when you compare it to those discrete solutions. You can see an example of this in the PCB images in the bottom right of the screen with the discrete solution on the left and the integrated solution on the right. The discrete solution requires various external components consuming a lot of PCB space. Next is emissions. CISPR32 is an electromagnetic compatibility standard for multimedia equipment. This includes information technology equipment, audio equipment, video equipment, broadcast receiving equipment, and entertainment lighting control equipment. CISPR32 considers two classes of end-user terminal equipment. Class A devices are those that are marketed for use in a commercial, industrial, or business environment. And Class B devices are those that are marketed for use in the home. Class B limits are more stringent than the Class A limits. And these new devices really deliver on low emissions. The plot on the top right shows them clearly passing the CISPR 32B line requirements with margin. They can meet these requirements all while using just a two-layer board and for any low conditions or voltage levels. Some diagnostics that have also been included in these products to verify that the system and product is behaving as expected. The Enable DC-DC Faults Protection pin is used as either an input pin to enable or disable the integrated DC-DC power converter or an output pin to alert if the power converter is not operating properly. If a fault is reported, this pin will go low, disabling the DC-DC converter to prevent severe damage to the product or any downstream components. Since these products separate the logic and power pass, that enables a wide logic supply range of 1.71 volts to 5.5 volts and a power converter supply range of 3 volts to 5.5 volts. So for example, this allows the power converter to function at 5 volts in and 5 volts out while providing as low as 1.8 volt logic to the secondary side components such as an ADC. The ISO W7741 also improves the V-ISO out load regulation from 10% to 5%, which is important to a system so that a stable voltage supply is provided to the secondary side components as load changes occur. If proper load regulation is not maintained, the downstream devices such as a transceiver or ADC will become marginal to their guaranteed values. And lastly, I'll reiterate the simplicity of design. Isolation has steadily grown as more and more systems are being driven to higher voltages and need to communicate across multiple voltage domains. The addition of isolation and isolated power complicates the design process for signal chain designers who traditionally did not have to worry about power supply designs. For example, the designers need to use the right power, control, topology, choose the size and cost-effective transformers, and also take care of the routing parasitic to achieve optimum emissions and efficiency. By providing a single chip solution, such as the ISO W1044, designers can streamline the transformer selection process during design. And then let's not forget about the ease of certifications. Different regions have different requirements for standards such as VDE, UL, CSA, and TUV. And discrete solutions put the onus of finding the right transformer on the designers. The integrated solutions are certified by these agencies already and thereby speeding up the design and time to market. Fantastic. Okay, so Luke, do you guys have any eval modules for these digital isolators as well? Of course. These three families are available to sample or purchase on TI.com, along with their corresponding evaluation modules if engineers want to test out the emissions or any of the integrated features. We have a lot of resources readily available at TI.com slash isolation to help designers learn more about these products and make smart design decisions so they can design quickly and move on to more taxing problems. Excellent. Now, Luke, you also mentioned DC-DC power supplies as well, right? Yep. Let's talk about another way to achieve integrated power isolation, power modules. So maybe a design requires a bit more flexibility and integrating signal isolation is one step too far, but you still want to integrate the isolated power supply and take advantage of space savings and design simplicity. Our UCC-12050 and UCC-14240 isolated power modules 
feature integrated transformer technology, which combines high-density isolated power conversion with low EMI, high isolation reliability, and IC-sized packaging. This can significantly reduce the size of power supplies while also optimizing system thermal performance. The great idea behind these power modules is customers can scale this compact and integrated solution across many different applications. Okay, so Luke, what kind of benefits are we looking at with these solutions? So I'll start with a comparison of the two devices shown. The UCC 12050 is a bias supply for signal chain. It can be a power supply for isolated amplifiers like current sensing or voltage sensing, or a power supply for a digital isolator or isolated interface like CAN or I2C. Then the UCC 14240 is a bias supply for isolated gate drivers, and it's used heavily in automotive applications like traction inverter and OBC. These two families bring a lot to the table. Compared to a traditional flyback power converter, which needs a discrete transformer, post regulation, and controller, they can reduce the design volume by up to 80% between the PCB area and overall height. The integrated transformer is optimized for EMI performance. So just like the ISOW products, we understand that EMI is critical and it's a key spec that we design for. Next is accuracy, where these devices have an industry best providing dual outputs with plus or minus 1% accuracy, and that's over a temp range of negative 40 to 150 degrees C. Overall, this family offers a complete portfolio with different isolation levels, whether designers need basic or reinforced isolation, different input and output levels, different power output levels. TI continues to invest in this portfolio to provide even smaller and more integrated solutions. You get the performance, power density, and integration all balanced, and so you can get to market quickly. Fantastic. Now, what if my audience wants to get started with these solutions? Probably the best way is to check out our gate driver reference design. This reference design combines a functional safety rated isolated gate driver with the UCC 14240 isolated bias supply. It's for use in powertrain EV applications like traction inverter and OBC. TI developed this reference design because there's a trend towards distributed architectures where there will be one supply for every isolated gate driver. And the discrete flyback solution uses two large of external transformers. Adding a distributed architecture helps with overall system reliability and providing a lightweight solution to this problem is critical. I will also point out that the solution provides enough isolation for use in those 800 volt powertrains and provides isolated voltage output for silicon carbide applications at plus 15 volts and negative 5 volts. Okay, well, Luke, what would you like my audience to take away from today's Chalk Talk? Let's wrap it up with just a quick summary of the topics today. If designers are looking for high reliability, whether that is electrical specs or the isolation performance, or looking for a broad portfolio of products with many forms of integration, it's great to start with TI. So we talked about SSRs or solid state relays, where our solutions provide significant increased reliability compared to mechanical relays and photo relays. Also integrated power and data isolators, where significant integration happens, all while meeting industry emissions requirements. And lastly, the isolated by supplies for ultimate ease of design and flexibility. I'll again recommend checking out ti.com slash isolation, where you can find the products we discussed today, as well as many other portfolios of isolated products, and a lot of cool resources to help you learn and design quickly. Fantastic. Well, Luke, it was a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely, Amelia. Thanks for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Texas Instruments. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.